So I just got done mowing, and uh, when I mow, I listen to Bible teachings usually, and I just get a lot of thoughts going on in my head, things that I want to talk about. And sometimes it's like, I wish I could just record like right now while I'm mowing and stuff, because the ideas are just coming and stuff. But I just want to talk about some things that I've already talked about, but maybe clarify things a little more. And uh, I want to talk about the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. They're the same thing. The phrases mean the same thing. Don't listen to these hyper-dispensationalists, these dispensational salvationists, uh, these people who you know try to split everything and teach heresy in doing so. Um, because that is indeed what they do when they do that. They use that to teach other false doctrines. And... Uh, you know, such as, you know, some people can be in the kingdom of God, but they won't be in the kingdom of heaven and whatever. That's a bunch of nonsense, okay? It's just a figure of speech. The, the difference is a figure of speech, okay? Heaven is, is in place of God because that's where God dwells. It's the same thing. It's God's kingdom. It's where God reigns. Anyone who is ever saved is in God's kingdom. And I was thinking that's another thing that refutes easy believism because if you're in God's kingdom, you know, you... You have to be a servant of God, okay? God has to rule over you. And people can say, well, you can be in a kingdom and you can just live there and you can just be a, um, you know, pedestrian or whatever. But the Bible refutes that because Jesus says, those who would not that I should reign over them, bring them before me and slay them, okay? <clears throat> and these parables always talk about the servants and the unprofitable servants, okay? And the unprofitable servants aren't saved people who just lose things, uh, you know, who lose blessings or whatever because they're unprofitable. It says, cast them, the, you know, give them their portion with the hypocrites. Okay. You know, they go to hell. Okay. So the only ones who will be ruling and reigning with Christ are his servants. Those who have submitted to his lordship, to Jesus as king. He rules over them. Okay. And so... There are different uh, states of God's kingdom, you know, different, you know, I can't think of the words right now to describe it. But, you know, right now, those of us who are on earth, who are saved, we are in God's kingdom and he rules in our hearts. Okay. Um, so, yes, there is in a spiritual sense the kingdom and there is a future sense of the kingdom where Christ will reign on earth. Okay. And his saints will reign with him. But the difference between those is not one is the kingdom of God and one is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven are the same. They are God's kingdom. And there are, you know, different senses in, in, in that kingdom. Um, you know, I'm at a loss for words now how to completely describe it. But that's going to be a future study anyways. I keep saying this that I plan on doing this. But I do. There's studies that I'm working on now, and I need your prayers that I'll get some things done this weekend, but um, I do plan on getting that study for the kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God, and I want it to be extensive, and I want it to be very detailed, and I want people who listen to it, who look at the study, to really understand that there is no difference between these, and I want to give, you know, a, an understanding of what God's kingdom is in general, too. Um, you know, there's a lot to study on that, though. Um... But I, I'm also thinking about this because I posted this video the other day with Robert Breaker talking about the gospel and uh, how he says there's two different gospels. There's the gospel of the kingdom and there's the gospel of the grace of God. And, uh, you know, that they're different gospels. And and, and Paul said, if, if any angel preaches another gospel, let him be accursed. And Robert Breaker says, well, in, in the book of Revelation and the seven-year tribulation, they are preaching a different gospel, but that's fine because that's a different dispensation or whatever. And that's nonsense, okay? And I may have said some things before. I wasn't sure about this, and I still have more to study. But, yes, they are the same gospel, okay? Um, and hyper-dispensationalists, dispensational salvationists will say these things that sound legit. I mean, any false teacher, they'll take a verse here or there, and they'll say things that sound legit, but then when we really think about it, we truly study it, you know, prayerfully, we'll come to the understanding that this is nonsense. And so, but what they will say is things like, you know, the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of the grace of God are completely different. Of course, John the Baptist, Jesus was not preaching that Jesus died on the cross and rose again three days later. Okay, so people will be like, wow, that's true, you know, they must be different gospels. 
But here's the thing, though. Like I said, God's kingdom, anyone who is saved is in God's kingdom, okay? So the gospel of the kingdom is, is concerning the things of God's kingdom and how to enter therein and such, right? So that's the same with the gospel of the grace of God, okay? It's how do we enter God's kingdom? Well, Jesus died on the cross. He rose three days later. He died for your sins. You know, repent, believe in him, okay? But what the gospel of the grace of God is when we're talking about Christ died on the cross, you know, talking about his death, burial, and resurrection, and forgiveness of sins through his blood, it's more of an advanced revelation of the gospel of the kingdom, okay? So the Bible is advanced revelation, and we need to understand that. And they'll use the same thing for salvation as a whole. They'll say that, you know, well, people in the Old Testament, they were saved by works because, you know, they had the law and such, and they couldn't believe on Jesus because Jesus hadn't came yet in all this. But no, they believed in God the Father. And Jesus and God the Father are one. It's the same God. It's the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three distinct persons, one triune God, right? So in the Old Testament, they were not saved by works, and the whole New Testament completely refutes that. So the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the grace of God, is just a more advanced revelation and more specific with more details that they didn't have back then. Even though the Old Testament prophesied, you know, that Christ would would die, would come and die for the sins of his people and whatnot. And Jesus even said it himself, you know, he talked about his resurrection. But people didn't really totally understand that yet because it hadn't happened. It's the same thing. So when the angel is preaching the gospel of the kingdom or the gospel in the seven-year tribulation, it's the same gospel, okay? It's all the same, okay? Um... We just have more advanced revelation now than they did, okay? Which is really cool, too. I mean, like, at different points in time when people were saved, they believed what has been revealed up to them all the way back to Adam and Eve, you know, all the way back to the book of Genesis. And, you know, we have all this revelation now. We have the complete revelation of God, the King James Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, you know. And we are just so blessed. And, uh, you know, I was thinking it was crazy, too, of, like, how, how, how the times are with all the false teaching and stuff. It's like, you know, they were persecuted, and there are Christians that are still persecuted today, you know, by ISIS and things like that. But they didn't have, like, millions of Catholics, millions of Jehovah's Witnesses, millions of Mormons, you know, false teachers everywhere that have, you know, made a, um, you know, impact for, like, centuries you know, so, I mean, we are up against a lot of false teaching, a lot of heresy. We have things that we have to deal with that they necessarily didn't have to on a scale like that back then. So that's pretty interesting to consider, really. Um, you know, that's why I think a lot of ministries and stuff are based on, you know, a lot a lot of exposing other, other teachings and stuff. But there is so much false teaching out there. And, uh... So, I don't want to talk about a little bit about the pre-tribulation rapture. It's that I still hold to the pre-tribulation rapture for reasons different than most pre-trib people do, but I still have questions about it. And there could come a point in time when I get revealed to me that the pre-tribulation rapture is a lie. I'm open to that, although I do not see that right now. And so I know that if I do come to that conclusion that a lot of people will just be disappointed and won't want to listen to me or whatnot, or they'll expose me. Um, but that's fine, and I totally expect that. And I've said that we should divide over this rapture issue, and I still hold to that. But there's a lot that needs to be understood about it. And there's a lot of false teaching about it on all sides. I'm coming to that conclusion. I've said before, and I'll say it again, and this is a study that I'll do in the future as well, is that the loss of rewards doctrine is false. The judgment seat of Christ, as it is taught in the preacher of rapture, is false. It's not a judgment for Christians only where they will be judged by their works. The judgment seat of Christ is God's day of judgment. It, it is the being a seat of Christ. There will only be saved and lost people being judged, and those who are saved you know, are saved, and those who are lost are lost. And the lost could be judged by their works and, and have different degrees in hell. But anybody who goes to heaven is there because of what Christ did 
and all the rewards will be because of what Christ earned, not what we earned. And there will be no loss, no suffering, no pain, no sorrow. Okay, and we will all be equal, all one in Christ. But, um, so usually the judgment seat of Christ is used to what is one of the pillars to uphold the pre-tribulation rapture. And I know it's absolutely false, so that pillar is gone. And, um, but that does not destroy the preacher of rapture in my view. Okay, that doesn't, the preacher of rapture doesn't really rely on that. Um, but also John 14, I've even thought myself, I've seen the comparisons between 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, I think, where that speaks about the rapture, and John 14, where Jesus said, you know, in my Father's house there are many mansions and whatnot, you know, if I leave I'll come again to you and bring you where I am. And, so there's there's pages where people list the comparisons and it looks like identical, and you know just because some things are, look the same, you know, it doesn't mean that they are the same. And as I have looked at it more, I don't think that John fourteen is talking about the rapture. I think he's talking more about the coming of the Holy Spirit as the Comforter. I do believe that the Old Testament saints were regenerated; they were were indwelt. So when the Holy Spirit, you know came in the New Testament, it wasn't for an indwelling, it was more of a new empowerment for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know, for the empowerment of preaching and stuff, and gifting all believers, but in John 14, I think that's what he's mostly talking about in that chapter, is the coming of the, of the Holy Spirit as the comforter, and um, also, you know, maybe he's saying in a general sense that ultimately anyone who is saved will be with him. You know, and there are just things that we need to consider, figures of speech and the whole context and everything. But I don't see that as speaking of the rapture. But there are reasons that I still do hold to the rapture, and that is because of Revelation 3.10. I have not seen any good commentaries on Revelation 3.10 that seems reasonable because it's talking about a specific time where, you know, the, the, there will be a trial of the whole earth. And, you know, it doesn't seem um, to add up to all things. You know, plus Jesus says in the Gospels, pray that you will escape all these things. You know, how so, in what sense? It seems that the preacher of rapture could still hold up there, but there could be other considerations that I need to really study. Um, also in the Gospels, where it talks about the days of Lot, the days of Noah, it doesn't seem to work out with some kind of a post-trib rapture. Also, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, as I've said before, I still hold to this, that, you know, he says, before the day of the Lord comes, uh, you know, they will be saying peace and safety and then sudden destruction. And I don't see where anywhere during the whole seven-year tribulation where the lost will be saying peace and safety. Um, so I need to reconcile these things, you know. And I've wondered, like, are they saying peace and safety because Jesus is coming and they think that he's coming to save them? And said they're, they're sent to hell. But it doesn't really seem to work out right. Plus, if you don't believe in the pre-trib rapture and you hold some kind of a mid-trib or post-trib, then you have the whole thing of replacement theology. You know, what about the Jews? What about the whole reason for Daniel's 70th week seems to be focused on the Jews? What about the 144,000? You know, why? Why are there the two witnesses? You know, so there are so many questions that need to be answered if the pre-trib rapture is false. And, you know, like I said, there are a lot of teachings tied in with the pre-trib rapture that are false. That I've said, you know, the judgment seat of Christ, loss of rewards, and John 14, I don't think it's pointing towards the rapture. Um... You know, of course, any argument where someone says that, you know, people can lose their salvation in Daniel's 70th week is completely false. That's just heresy. So that's not supporting anything in the Bible. That's just teaching heresy. Um, but so, so there's things on both sides, and I think there's a lot of error and false teaching on both sides. And so that takes a lot of study, and I did dig into that for a while. <laughs> But now I'm more focused on, you know, the doctrines of Jesus, the doctrines of salvation and sin and everything else. And so once I get all these, you know, really important foundational doctrines, I want to dig back into eschatology and try to 
answer these things. And I want to listen to every point of view, you know, the preterist, which is probably absolute heresy. But, you know, even listening to false teaching, it can kind of open up your, your mind, get you to think and to examine things more. You know, and if you're newly saved and stuff, I don't encourage that right away. But, uh, I mean, you really never know what you're getting into, I guess, when you're, when you're listening to teaching. You know, you never know if it's really false or true. I mean, um, some, some ways you can stay away from certain denominations or whatever. But uh, you never really know, I guess, until you start listening to people and you study yourself. So, um, so yeah, there's just a lot to learn. But I, as far as the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the grace of God, they are the same. Just the fact that Jesus died, rose from the grave three days later is more of an advanced revelation of the gospel of the kingdom. But that doesn't mean that they're not the same. They're, spe they're speaking about God's kingdom. Okay. It's just like people in the Old Testament, they did, they were saved by grace through faith, but the object of faith was different. Okay. Like when Galatians 3 says, now that faith has come, now that the gospel declaring a new object for faith has come. Okay, it doesn't mean that now people are safe through faith and they weren't before. Okay, it's just a different object for faith now. Now we know about Jesus and the death, burial, and the resurrection. A lot more is revealed to us now than it ever was before. So I hope that makes sense to you guys and makes you think. And, uh, you know, and as I'm studying, when I get to studying the eschatology again, I'll probably make like a list, you know, a list of supports for the preacher of rapture. And uh, maybe... I might do that and allow people to comment on that and give different inter interpretations if you want. Um, who knows? So, but I'm not going to do that for a while. There's a lot of other studies that I want to look at. But I mean, I'm always in the background considering these things. And if something pops up or whatever, you know, I look into it a little bit. But, but if, you know, if I wanted to really focus on the rapture and everything, I mean, I could spend a lot of time on that. And I don't want to just be focused on one thing like that. So I think it's better for me to understand other things and come back to it, and I'll have more of an understanding because of things that I've already learned. So hope that makes sense. But I uh, plan to get some studies done this weekend and hopefully make some good videos next week that will be edited and lots and lots of details and stuff. So thanks for watching. God bless. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.